Welcome to Safe, Efficient, Profitable, a worker safety podcast where we break down real problems from real situations and discuss realistic solutions. And here are your hosts, owners of Allen Safety LLC, Joe and Jen Allen. is number 26 already 26 what makes a good trainer yeah we're gonna find out today i don't know i don't know either (laughs) well that may be the end of some of you on this podcast (laughs) we just clicked off this one this is my best one (laughs) all right so here we go so for those you don't know we're on uh, youtube and you can see us and if you want to listen to any kind of uh podcast and listen to us going down the road that's what i do for those you don't know i drive a lot i drove uh 2,000 miles in the last few days. And one of the things I do is I listen to podcasts from different groups and it gives you something different to think about, something to do. And so maybe this will help you also. All right, here we go. So what makes a good trainer? You know what? You got to make sure that it's what somebody does. There is a lot of people out there who, especially coming out of the, the last few years, are trainers and they're not really not. So reevaluate your people. That's the first thing. <laughs> so, so let's break that down. Yeah, so... So there is a difference in my world of being a subject matter expert right. and then being a good teacher who can translate that to others. Those like, are, that, they're not synonymous. They that's don't not, mean the same thing. One like, does not equal the other to yeah, me. That's not welcome. Welcome. If you start off the class like that, everybody's that. If you walk in, let's eat some oh, go. Nah, everybody's going to be a lot happier. It's a so, different vibe. It's a whole vibe, man. All right. So, we, so we're asked about this all the time. Uh, that's why we're doing an episode on it. Uh, the biggest thing is that people are really, really good at resumes and interviews and all these different things nowadays and because of the different sources out there. And one of the things we do is when we hire somebody, we do about a 90-day, 1,000-point uh, matrix. And uh, why, do, why do we even waste our time doing that if these people are experts when we hire them, Jen? Man, I don't know, because I heard the other day somebody was like, yeah, and we we even like we don't let anybody go out into the field until we at least evaluate them once. And I'm like, once? <laughs> What do you mean once? Yeah. What are you talking about? I evaluate him for three months and still every every day and most evenings. I mean, weekends, nights, we we go after everything. Three months is to see if you're still going to be on my staff. I'm still coaching you every day and through most classes and every night. But they're an expert. For like the next 12 months. Yeah, they're still an expert though. (laughs) So that's one of the things we talk about. Just because they're an expert don't mean they're a good trainer. Yeah. And, And I'm really looking for what is the personality? How do they translate the information? Did they lie to me on their resume? Absolutely. Because that happened. There's a lot of people that are experts at meters till so they grab one and don't know how to explain it. Yeah, like, or they grab an, an expert in or they grab an air pack and they're like, this is empty. And they it's look not. at the chest strap and it was just the bottle was not. Yeah. Yep. So a personality. That that's a big one we look for. Yeah. And the delivery. Just the, your Absolutely. delivery, your personality when you're doing it. Do you even like what we're training on? That's right. I mean, because I'll tell you something, if you're a trainer out there listening to this and you don't like what you're doing, people we can feel know. it. We, can we all it. know. <laughs> it's kind of like if you go to an industry and people know you've never been in the industry the first 30 minutes, people just know. Yeah. If you're completely indifferent, that changes the entire vibe of the yeah. class as opposed to someone who's excited to be there, excited to travel if they're traveling, excited to, you know, whatever the subject is, if they're excited to be at the location. Listen, here's the other part of it. If that trainer does not like the industry that they're in, that translates yeah. also. Yeah, can I like being too. dirty. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I like the renderings and the wastewaters <laughs> and the TMI. Yeah, yeah, I like the dirty stuff. And people are like, well, why did you? Because I think you learn really how to do some of that stuff when you're training in that environment. Anyone well, can train I can't in a disagree clean. disagree with that. I can't disagree with that either because my view is always like uh, the places that are kind of the grossest human nature is people most people don't want to go there so they usually have the most drama and craziness going on and like that's where i can make the most impact so that's where i'm trying if you're gonna do if you're gonna do cpr training in a classroom that's great but once you go out there when you got a a whole bunch of hogs looking at you or a whole bunch of cattle looking at you or chickens or turkeys or in rendering that cpr is a lot different yeah so i like that so that's so that's one of the things make a good trade you have to like that environment another one is you got to be able to compartmentalize yeah i was in the military and i was not good at this when i first went in you know i got better and better as life went on and even the last 20 something years i've got better at this you have to be able to turn everything else off they have one day one monday and everybody says well it's a monday you don't get a monday if you're training it's the only day they go here 
Yeah. They expect the same product to people no Thursday. Of, there's no case of the Mondays. No, you trainer. have to be ready to go be, Monday. You got to be on. Yep. Yep. And I think that that's probably the hardest thing. At least that's what I've noticed when people come to us as they struggle with is that, you know, everybody has personal stuff going on. And especially like you that's and life. I, when we train together, or like when we're doing stuff together and something's going on, like with the kids or family, everybody has that. Everybody has loved ones that are having medical problems, potentially whatever. But, you know, you can't run out of class on break every break crying because Absolutely. of what's going on. Now, I'm not saying don't be human, but I'm saying it's, you it's know, a job. They deserve Yep. The, the They're paying for a that, product. The employee in that, that class deserves to have the same quality and same environment and, and learning opportunities and discussion that, you know, they had last week at the other location you're Absolutely. at. So you got to, your job is to deliver that. And that rolls kind of into like, you can't, you can't be very consistent. Nope. You're lacking consistency. And no, no negativity and, and no negative anything. We are a hundred percent positive company. We yeah. believe you, we're called process improvement company, safe, efficient, profitable. We are process. We believe a hundred percent. You can always get better. Yeah. So there's no room for negativity or complaining no, or whining. We're not going to bash just, the company. No, we're, we're not, not going to have the water cooler. We're not going to tell like no, we're going to be better today. That's why we're here. Uncomfortable today. jokes. Yeah, you know, I've been to training where you know you're, you're just sitting in there, and it, honestly, it takes a lot to defend me. I grew up in the packing houses. It takes a lot. But it's but, just like, you, you know, you kind of look around the room and you're like, you know, this doesn't necessarily bother me, but it is offensive. Let's be polite. And it's weird. Yeah. We, like, we believe in being very polite. Yeah. That's my biggest thing. Because you got to let everything else go. So. But I think part of being a good trainer, too, is also recognizing that moment and how to recover from that and rein it back in out of the negativity Absolutely. or away from like the weird jokes or the weird comments that could be. Because that's life. And not make the environment weird when you rein it in, too. Because nobody likes to feel like they got scolded by mom or dad. That kills the environment in the class, too, or the vibe. Like if yeah. you had an, a, a good thing going and now everybody's like, Oh, we just got yelled at. This is uncomfortable. Yeah. Like that's awkward too. So you kind of have to be, you know, able to move in and out of some of that and have the personality where you can relate to the information without making people feel weird, whatever's going on. Or like if you have to correct someone because they don't have the right PPE on or something, sure. or, you know, I mean, like you've got to be able to do that. And then, you know, also self-evaluated like, well, Probably wouldn't have said that that way again. Yeah, and I, I give you for example. I've wanted for years to have a somebody who speak Spanish to be one of our trainers. Yeah. I took Spanish in high school and college, but nope, not like the industry is and how they talk and the yeah. different dialects. Well, we, that's, and, the dialects is really yeah. the issue is trying to figure out how to communicate across all of the different variations of the languages. Yeah, and we've had you know because Spanish isn't Spanish, right? We we do some of the drills last few weeks, and we would say something like you know. This is a sight glass, and it was translated side mirror, and it depends on that dialect and that person. And you, yeah. even if you use other other people or other stuff, the point about it is, is that I wanted to do that forever. We got that done. Now, did I think we did a great job before training? Absolutely. We were always acknowledging the different language barriers and managers. Absolutely. But I still thought we'd get better. So what everybody else needs to know in this podcast is I don't believe we're ever done. I no, believe we can always improve, and I believe we can always keep forward. going. We 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 are going to manage this, and we're going to be better at what we're going to do. It number what? Well, and that's that's kind of the attitude you should have, and and you should honestly understand that you know, as a trainer, if you're going to a different location, different industries, different states, whatever, different roles of people are in your class, you should be modifying how you're delivering Absolutely. that message and customizing it. You know, if I've got all production in one class, I'm gonna. You know, use different examples and modify my training as opposed to if I've got all refrigeration or maintenance Absolutely. in another one. It, it, I'm not using the same examples. A few a few weeks ago, we was doing a training out east, and and I had a whole bunch of uh, people who are like leads, and all they do is onboard training. Yeah. Well, that was a great class, but I had done one for a while because everybody was that way. So you know what? When we went to the floors, we didn't we didn't talk about refrigeration. We talked about. How do you train them on PP? How do you train them to stand? How do you train them how to how to get the work on time and yep. position? How to sharpen knives? I mean, it, you're right. It's a different way of looking at that puzzle. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, as you move in and out of, you know, my farms are usually the safety manager in charge of my farms is usually regional. So they're in charge of many farms, which they all have or different things going on and also a mill. So oh. the farms aren't even necessarily the same from farm to farm because of the job tasks. Right. It's not just like, well, a farm Absolutely. to farm. No, it's not. And then you add in, you know, the feed mill side to that. And now I've got to make sure that I'm really adapting and changing. 
And now if I send that mill manager or that safety manager who's in charge of that pot out there and I send them over to a packer, now they're having to modify Absolutely. and adapt and change again. And Absolutely. so a good trainer knows how to pull examples from each of those specific industries to tailor that message Correct. to be something that's relevant to that group. And for, for you people who want to be a good trainer, stay with the hazard. You know, yep. don't get caught up. Don't get caught up in a guard. Don't get caught up in a job presence. Stay with the hazard. What is the hazard? How do yep. I manage the hazard? How do we do? Train is supposed to be reducing hazards, yep. reducing risk. And if you yep. stay on that part, your mind will open up and you'll see different yep. things. And you'll be able to pick out that hazard no matter where Absolutely. you are. Because a hazard is a hazard no matter where you're at. Absolutely. You know, so, you know, we kind of look at that and we move in and out of different departments. I mean, one of my biggest things is when we don't modify the training based on the department. So maybe we have it you know, pack and house specific or case ready specific, but it's all the same for the training, no matter if you are a maintenance person or rendering or wastewater or production, everybody's getting the same thing. Well, that's impossible for things like Hascom because the chemicals being used in, you know, wastewater have nothing to do sometimes with what's going on right. on, on the production floor. Wait, 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 I got nothing it. to go on if I'm working maintenance and maybe I don't do chemicals at all, but I'm working during sanitation on thirds. Absolutely. You know, and what time during third? Yeah. <laughs> For those who don't know, sanitation has multiple lives at night, and they use different kinds of chemicals at different stages in different yeah. ways. Maybe they yeah. fog or foam or mist. So, yes, you got to give people that information. Yeah, so, so being a good trainer is understanding not only how to tailor it to your industry, your specific job site, but also but the department. Yeah, and the time of day. And the time of day. Yeah, There's understanding a- that cycle, that 24-hour cycle, if your business is 24 hours. For those you also don't know out there, we, we train every day. So we train lots. Yeah. Of, I mean, next next weekend and Sunday we'll be in a plant, and it's not that it's it, you know so there are people who don't like that when it comes to training, but we believe a hundred percent you got to try as hard as you can to train when it's their environment. Yeah. And what day works best for them? I, I actually personally love training on Saturdays and Sundays when it comes to good well, find no space. All stuff. Yeah, I get I get to use the spaces. I mean, yeah, last you get week to get into different stuff. That's last week they down. were down, and we got to do a lot of great training. We wouldn't build. I love that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. So yeah. Oh, I agree. And then you know, also just kind of evaluating on what makes a good trainer. I don't. I don't like assigning. Well, they're just the trainer, so therefore they're good because they're the one we have here. Or their safety, so they just automatically are like, you know, well, that's that's going to be the trainer for that. They may have the knowledge and they may be an expert at something, but again, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have the ability to translate that well to others and then others receive that information because it's all about the delivery. Absolutely. Right. I mean, it's all about having them, you know, be able to use examples that are able to be understood by their audience absolutely you know i was i was a paramedic in the navy and i don't i use that data but you know i still defer to the location or if we have fire departments to show up during the training yeah or we and, have like i let them i let them do, EMTs yeah, I let them do the they're the such a expert that day i'm just they're guiding it as a trainer to get the right results that we all get the end result correct but on the flip side, just because someone's a volunteer firefighter or they're an EMT or whatever, that doesn't necessarily mean that they know everything about everything either. Absolutely. I mean, like you've got to, to be a good trainer, you've got to know where your limitations are too. Absolutely. Yeah. Like the, I, I know of this, but I'm not an expert. So this is, this is really somebody else's wheelhouse and be able to defer to, you know, the, the other person at the location or the, the maintenance person or whatever. Yeah. One of the things you got to be able to do is you got to be able to say, Yes, you got certifications. Yes, you got experience. That's right. But you ought to be willing to say, I, I don't know. You know, I say it all the time. There, every day, that's why I say you can always improve. There's no yeah. way anybody can know everything about every subject. So you have to say, I don't know. And you got to you got to be honest with yourself. There's a lot of trainers I've been through in history that want to try to answer every question. You can't. You're not a good trainer. No, you have to know, like, well, I don't know. But I think part of it is also knowing where to find the resources, who to contact for the information, and then Absolutely. following back up, too. Absolutely. You know, I mean, kind of on the, the concept of you can't be an expert at everything. You know, I know mills pretty well, feed mills pretty well. But, you know, a couple months back, we got asked to do that project at the chocolate right. location. and Milling is similar when you know across the board, but there are some differences in refining sugar and chocolate and right. things like well, that. I'm more the fire protection and dust protocols and how things go back. Yeah, the explosion side. Yeah. The the so they both go people. together. Yeah. So not one of us is a good trainer or one of us the expert. It took both of us. Yeah, I had to spend a couple of days researching how some of the regs have moved in and out and changed from the refining side for the sugar and the chocolate because it's not the same as mill and corn. 
<laughs> you know, or, or you know, so part of being a good trainer is do some research. Yep. Take continued some education yep. and continue to, you know, improve your product. Cause I think it always has to be improving. Absolutely. It helps with engagement too. So if, you, if you've team. been with us over the years, we try to change the training every year. I'm not sure how from year to year, how it's going to change, but I know that's our goal. So part of our year of training is to figure out what we're going to train on. Yeah. What can we do to get better? We write down list every week of failures. Yeah. And, and we say, how do we make it better? So. Well, and, and here's my, here's one of my kind of things that gets me. There's been a lot of things posted over the years. So lots of stuff has been posted on Facebook or, you know, LinkedIn or whatever. And I'm like, if you're really a good trainer, why is everybody in that photo not wearing PPE? Yeah. We're, in an we're area where, where PPE is required. Like, why are we taking photos and putting people's faces on there first? You know, I hope we're signing waivers. Cause that's super weird to me that you're using them as yeah, advertising. To be, to be a trainer. Yeah, you've got the company logo in the back. Look at all yeah. the places. That I you're, train. you're a trainer. You're not, you're not an infomercial. Yeah, that's a little bit funky. But, but I'm really, really concerned anytime I see a trainer letting safety stuff slide a little bit because in my world that's basically you know the people in the class are looking at that person like they're the expert so if that person isn't enforcing a safety rule and saying well it's not that important today well then my, is it, is, is, it, it real? is it ever important? Uh, last week the meter went down and they said, What are we gonna do till the meter is calibrated? Not go Nothing. in. Let's go sit here and talk. I'm gonna go. I'll talk about things we like about confined spaces. Yeah. And they looked at me like, What are you doing? There's no way we're gonna go into That's, stuff's not right. And they have to understand that. They've got to know yeah. where the cut because if you don't take it serious and you do it all the time, then they're not gonna take yeah. it seriously either. And that could really be putting them at risk. You know, one of the biggest things uh, that we've learned over the years is the meter and wrong. No, so, I trust the meter. It, when the meter's going off and they're like, oh, I always trust about the meter it. first. Recalibrate and keeps going I on. I'm like, well, first. there's something wrong with that pit then. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all didn't lock something out. Something's not right. And that's the point is that you, you're you training them to be able to identify that risk and to know here's your stop point. That's Absolutely. just as important than anything else. And a good trainer will make sure that they convey that, that like, here's the limitation. Here's your all stop. Yeah, there's there are clients that don't know us that well when they first hire us. And we go in there and, and Jen and I go, a little bit back and forth on this but one of our first things we try to do is manage that first hour we yeah. try to get the first so one of the things we do is for those of you ever see any pictures about us we bring a lot of food it's about 50 to 80 to 100 dollars a day depends on the size of the class uh, we go to the store none of my team likes going to the store all the time i can tell you right i don't either no but, you're tired when you get yeah you're today, tired when but you get, i'm italian we, we yeah, but, but if love. you if you eat all the food on monday we buy it on monday night so tuesday gets the same yeah. it's not we bought Ten dollars worth of food, and Friday gets what's ever left. No, Friday gets the same class as Monday did. That's the first thing. So the first hour we do it. The other thing we do is we give out free shirts and hats for going. And we've done that forever. Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. We, we, I, I had someone pretty close to us go to like a first aid CPR class, or like it was like ALS or something. Sure. And the trainer brought in like hard boiled eggs and homemade sandwiches. And we're not, like, I'm not doing that. That's weird. Yeah, we're gonna we're a food company. That's a weird vibe. So we bring everything packaged and closed and sealed. And you get a piece of cheese. You don't grab into a bag full of shredded cheese. You get your own stick of cheese. So, but uh, but we we look at lunch and dinners. We look at it creates a lot of pride going to train. We, it's we, a vibe. We're trying to create an environment where people are negative to begin with because they don't want to be there historically right. they're mad because they don't want to be there because they've had a bad experience absolutely and you can feel it you can just like feel it rolling off when they're yeah, irritated yeah, yeah it's pretty like, rare we go here? somebody or we're the first person they've ever been trained by ever and they're excited to be yeah there. usually we're having to go somewhere second or third yep and but, they're uh, not happy but team and they're building like, well i don't even know why i'm here absolutely but team building is part of it you got to take that attitude the first hour and and make them turn make them look at it differently well I, I think a big part of it is you know the psychology of you're taking an individual who doesn't want to be there and how do i get them to you know at least stop that train of thought absolutely and then begin to open their mind because the sooner i can get them to open their mind and start you know being receptive to what i'm saying the quicker i'm learning the better the product's going to be because now i've got brainstorming going on i've got all that's right i want different departments involved so when they do all that you get a better buy-in yeah yeah and they're bouncing ideas off each other and you've got the engagement and you've got the they're 
proud, you know, to be a part of this. It's community. Yeah, you know, you, everybody you get, wants to be a part of something. You got to guide them. You got to, if you're going to be a great trainer, you got to make it feel like you're together. Make it, make it, a, make it a system approach, a team approach. It's not one department against another. You got to make it dynamic and move and not control. And, you well, know, I see a lot. Trainer dictating to them in an authoritative no. way either. It's like, we're in it together. Let the class kind of flow and move. You have to. You've got to let it go because, you know, when they're brainstorming and having some of these great discussions, you got to let it go a little That's bit. That's the best part of training sometimes. You. Yeah. Because you bring up stuff you're like, never would have thought of that. Yeah. If you cut them off though and are like, but we got to get through this. Well, then you're kind of, again, killing that creative spirit. And you could have just thought of something incredible. Absolutely. And you want that you want that value over and over and afterwards. I mean, you want immediate change mm-hmm. that night and you want continued change. You go, we just did a class a few weeks ago and I talked to one of the managers uh, last week. And I, I do follow up. So like, you know, it's been a month and a half ago. So even though I talked to them afterwards, made sure everything, I called them in. So how are we still done? They said they're still doing things and talking about it. Then that was successful. Yep. It, it, it's not It's not about whether I was right or wrong because it was not my environment. It was not my location. It was theirs. But as a good trainer, you should be able to take that information, take that feeling in the room and, and put it together. And if you package it right and make those people be engaged and be excited. It, it can be way more than you ever expected. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the, the goal is to continue that forward progress after you leave. I mean, that's the entire point of why you schedule so that's training. Good. That could be the best day of their week or the yeah. best day they've had in a while. Let them have some fun. Yeah. Let them, let them talk to each other and, and help each other and eat and drink and, and just enjoy and just go from a, a different state than a normal everyday work environment. Well, and sometimes, like you said, you know, that's what it takes to get people's brains to flip over and open up and be creative. Yeah. And, th- and that's where we start solving problems. Absolutely. Moving so forward and solving problems. That's so to close with do. this today, the best thing about being a good trainer is be nice. That's yeah. first. Uh, think about their day. Think about them first and think about what they're going to have to do after you leave. Your, yours is to make risk go down, to make steps go down a puzzle, to make their day easier. If you go in with the wrong attitude right off the bat or, or I'm better. If you've ever seen me, I sat down. I sat yeah. down at the table with everybody in the morning. I don't stand up. I sat down, and if I can't, yeah, let's just talk about it. We're just here having discussions, just like today. For those who are watching YouTube, we're sitting here. This is what training is like with us. How, how are we gonna How are we gonna drink coffee today? What can we do? Because you you, you want to break down every variable you can that first thirty minutes or an hour, so you've got buy in the rest of the day, and you can actually use that time. They only have so many minutes, so yeah. let's make those minutes productive and not be going through other stuff. Yeah. All right, you get to close out on this one. You got anything else? No, that's it. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and have a good day. I don't know what that was, everybody, but we'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently, we'll figure out series what she's having for lunch. Yes, so. right. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Safe, Efficient, Profitable, a worker safety podcast. If you like what you heard here, please take a moment to write us a quick review, like, subscribe, and share our podcast so that others can find us. For questions or to request topics that you'd like to hear on our next show, please visit us at www.allen-safety.com. Thank you.